All right. Well, thanks everybody for joining. And we will get ready to go. I'm going to introduce Bob, who uh, Bob Meisler is our uh, presenter today. He's coming from Azamara Cruises. And I just gave him control so that he can share his screen. But thank you, Bob, for joining us today. We love having you here. Uh, thank you to all the attendees. If you have any questions, feel free to put them in the chat or the Q&A. And Bob, I'm going to turn it over to you. Thanks. And N Nora, you're in Lindos on Rhodes, and I'm in one of our uh, suites on board the Azamara Pursuit. So um, it's interesting what technology can do, isn't it? Uh, Love it. Rescue Love away. It. So uh, thank you so much. And I really appreciate everybody joining us today. Um, we're going to have a fun talk about Azamara and we're going to talk about Greece as well. And uh, such a great destination. But I'm going to, without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. And hopefully you're going to be able to see this, um, my screen right now. And we're going to go ahead and get started. So I thank you so much. It looks beautiful. Oh, it does look beautiful, doesn't it? The windmill and just oh, grease in the evening. So again, thanks for joining us. When when I started with Azamara, boy, five and a half years ago, um, I, I learned quickly about our brand and just how awesome they are and how unique we are as well. And even though you might not have ever heard of Azamara, that's what I'm here for today. So I look forward to welcoming you to uh, not only Greece, but our brand. So the first time I went to Greece was two, two weeks after I started at Azamara. My director called me and said, I'm sending you to Greece because I want you to learn about it and you can come back and talk about it. I had never been, but I had books and magazines throughout my entire childhood looking at those pictures of Greece and dreaming, seeing those whitewashed buildings, right? And that caldera right there. And there's one of our ships in the caldera. And it was my dream to go into Ia, which is in Santorini, and go up and sit at a taverna and have some local food, local beer called Mythos, and be able to sit and watch the Santorini sunset because there's nothing like a Santorini sunset. So I'm going to tell you a little bit more about this story a little bit later, but it's definitely going to highlight what Azamara is, who we are, and how we're different, which you're probably wondering about today as well. And Nora, always feel free to chime in. And I will say that I like being interactive. So I might have you use the chat function a couple times today, um, just because um, I have a couple of little photos that I want to show. I want to see if uh, you recognize these items. But just to jump in straight away, uh, we're going to start with this. This is Cruise with Confidence and something we're very proud of at Azamara because you have new benefits, more flexibility, and up to, 40, up to 48 hours before you sail. So you're going to get the best price, the best offer, and a future cruise credit of 100%. So this is like you have the confidence to be able to book Azamara knowing that you're going to be able to take advantage of this. And uh, this is starting February. It started February 1st, and it goes through April 30th. These are three beautiful ships right now in Glasgow, in Scotland. And you might be asking, why Glasgow? Well, when the pandemic started, we had to take our ship somewhere to sit until we're ready to get back to sailing. And this is so much fun because um, they're, they're sisters. We call them the sisters. It's the journey, the pursuit, and the quest. They're all identical. But they're in Glasgow, downtown Glasgow, on the river because you know it's a safe harbor and the weather is better there than it would be on the coast. So these are only 690 passengers, two sets of elevators. You can be anywhere on the ship in five minutes with everything that you need under one roof. So I look at this and I get a little bittersweet because I know these ships inside and out and I wish like our guests do that we could be on the ships right now and sailing, but we have to just wait a little bit longer. For that. 
But the question that you're probably asking right now is why Azamara or who is Azamara? And it's a great question. I, I always talk about how we differentiate ourselves from other cruise lines. And we differentiate ourselves by staying longer in port than any other cruise line. So we're really about the destination and destination immersion. So if somebody were to ask you, you know, when you cruise, would you like to stay longer in port? I think your answer would be yes. So that Santorini sunset, uh, tapas after hours in Barcelona, maybe the Singapore night market in Singapore, being able to explore and take your time and stay longer in port, sometimes until 10, 11 o'clock, where the other ships leave at about five or six o'clock. So it's very important because we're just so dedicated to the destination. Um, so you'll fall in love with the time in port and the time to explore at your own pace. But when you get back onto the ship, boy, you are going to enjoy this upmarket experience. So again, uh, 690 passengers and about 408 crew members, which is a great ratio because you're so well taken care of. And we have some great amenities as well, which we'll talk about further um, here in a little bit, but we like to say welcome home. And that is my very good friend, Captain Carl and uh, Rizard up in the upper photo, welcoming some people on board. We're small and you're going to, you're gonna love that because our crew from the top down take care of you. And our crew is genuine. They love what they do and it shows and you're gonna have lifelong like memories of people who will remember, crew members, even the captain will remember your name, where you like to sit, where, what you like to drink, et cetera. So it's definitely a very home feeling. We like to call them our boutique hotels at sea. Only 690 passengers, slow cruising. And even though we're upmarket slash luxury, we're very not pretentious. So we want you to enjoy yourself and relax. I'll show you a couple of photos of the different uh, public spaces on the ship because you have everything that you could ever need um, on one small ship. This is one of my favorite spots. This is our, uh, what we call the living room. And I congregate here nightly, sometimes during the day. Uh, it's a great place way up high at the front of the ship to be able to look out and be able to see the ocean or pulling in or out of port. It's always a treat to be able to sit here, enjoy a cocktail and be able to relax. And I'll tell you, I have fallen asleep on these a couple of times, I will admit, because there's nothing better than just relaxing, being at sea and just kind of, you know, letting it all go. And, and, and we could all use a little bit of that right now. Dining from casual to elegant. We have so many different dining options on board. And again, it's from casual to elegant. Discoveries is our main dining room and we feature a menu every night that's different than the night before. For five different courses, pick off the menu and uh, it's open seating. So we don't have seating times. You can come as you are and uh, come as you like. So Discovery is one of my favorite restaurants on the ship. Um, the number one appetizer asked for nightly is escargot and it is fantastic. This is Prime C, this is our steakhouse and Aqualina, which is our uh, signature um, kind of upscale Mediterranean slash Italian restaurant. And again, just wonderful views, great service, and just the food is fantastic. Here are some of the our staterooms. If you take a look in the, the upper two photos, that is called the Club Spa Suites. These sell out almost immediately because it features that hot tub, as you can see in the photo on the right, out back with glass partitions. Imagine having champagne and sitting watching the world go by as you're sitting in your hot tub overlooking maybe the caldera in Santorini or maybe sailing through the British Isles or maybe sailing, boy, Bangkok, et cetera, because we're worldwide. We go everywhere in the world, all seven continents. So these are beautiful staterooms, just absolutely stunning and uh, love those balconies. Getting back to inclusive amenities that we offer on board, the, the, there's value there. 
and there's there's like less hassle because we include gratuities, food and beverages all day long, not just at meal time, cultural evenings, which we'll talk about shortly, and shuttle services, which mean, you know, we're smaller ports. We pride our sh- ourselves on being front and center in the different cities and ports that we visit. And because of the size of the ship, we're able to traverse some rivers to a certain extent to get you closer to that city. For instance, St. Petersburg, Russia, we're right downtown and we're three blocks from the Hermitage Museum right on the Neva River. Um, Bordeaux in France, same thing. And here we're an ocean liner, but we're in a river. Uh, Sevilla in Spain. But if we can't quite get you close enough, we're going to have shuttle services that will take you to and from these port communities, uh, and which is complimentary. So the value is there. We also pride ourselves on these very fun evening under the stars deck parties and this is a shot of one of our parties in monte carlo that we had and just the fun of being outdoors with live entertainment cocktails flowing an amazing amazing dinner and be able to just dance the night away it's just um it's spectacular and we just love the views that we have when we do this and the crew gets involved that middle top picture that's who i said that's rizard from poland and he's our hotel director on the azamara pursuit and it's just dancing and fun and just great times and great outstanding food and it's always fun to see the crowd get involved and the crew as well So that's a little bit about our ships. And you can also expect on the ships, you can expect live entertainment in our cabaret theater every single night, singing, dancing, et cetera. You can expect a world-class spa. Again, multiple dining options, but all at a slower pace, at a relaxed pace. We want you to enjoy yourself. So looking at this, here we are in Greece. Spectacular. And I believe that Greece is like Asamara is made for Greece. Small ship, we get to visit all these different islands and um, it's just absolutely stunning. And we'll talk a little bit about today about the different destinations we visit within Greece and we'll also go over some itineraries. Plus I also have a couple of little fun things to share. So most of our cruises are in Greece are going to start in Athens, and a lot of them end in Athens. And we call that a country-intensive voyage, meaning we're concentrating on that one country. Because we have voyages that if you want to do south of France and Italy and maybe Croatia, we have those. But there, we have countries all around the world that we just concentrate and dock at ports within that country. So you're gonna be starting or stopping usually in Athens. And I would highly recommend um, do a pre or a post day and arrange that through your travel advisor um, because you really want to be able to explore Athens at your leisure and be able to enjoy Athens as well. But getting back to Santorini. So the the remainder of the story is um, every, I got onto the ship and I was greeted with a glass of champagne and that welcome home message because we have such a following of repeat passengers that they know everybody. They, they, it's again, it's welcome home. And I was offered the opportunity, of course, like I said, to go to Santorini. And every morning when I would wake up, I would jump out of bed, open the blinds or the drapes, and there is a different island maybe Santorini, Mykonos, Rhodes, et cetera. It blew me away. The pictures that I grew up looking at didn't do it justice because it is so beautiful. So I got my dream. So I went to Santorini, got off the ship, went, did some touring, went to a winery, believe it or not, a winery on Santorini, and then ended up in Ia at a taverna, just like I wanted to do. I ordered grilled octopus, a Mythos beer, some great olives and bread. And I sat there looking down at the caldera and it was just about sunset. Our ship was there and there were two other company ships in the caldera. So a total of three ships. Right before the sunset, about a half hour before the other two ships left and they sailed away. So we were the only ship in the caldera in Santorini right before sunset. That means that the other folks had to rush 
see Santorini, you know, fight, you know, get on the vernacular with crowds to go down to get back onto the ship and they had to rush. We stay in Santorini 10 o'clock, sometimes 11 o'clock at night. So just imagine that feeling of ownership that you would have on Azamara after all the tourists left and you are there enjoying yourself and enjoying that, that, that experience that you've always looked forward to. And that's what we pride ourselves on. And that's what I really clicked with me when I came home and remembering how we stay longer important, how just important that is to the experiential traveler. So I'd like to be there right now, to be honest with you. So I'm gonna ask a question, you can use the chat function. What is this local drink that they have, it kind of tastes like licorice that they have in Greece. And of course, when you take a little drink of it, you're going to say, Opa, of course. So what is this, what is this wonderful drink? And uh, I'm gonna see if I can open up the chat box. I don't think I'm able to, but Nora is. So of course, Nora can tell us if, uh, we're getting any responses, etc. But um, I can see the chat, and Alan and Stacy have already chosen Uzo. Uzo, yes, Uzo, wonderful, refreshing Uzo, and you say "opa" when you eat when you drink it. So that's Uzo, and you have to. No trip to Greece would be the same if you didn't have just a little bit of Uzo. Patmos became one of my favorite islands. I didn't know anything about it but it has a very biblical history, believe it or not, um, and is one of those islands that's getting more recognition now because you normally think of Santorini and Mykonos, but now you're throwing in other islands like Patmos, like Rhodes, etc. You will love Patmos and the history and the monastery at the top of the hill or mountain overlooking the entire island. So great rich history and again for history lovers you can't do better than Greece it's just there's something new and ruins around every corner Heraklion another great port Rhodes and Nora and I were talking about our love for Rhodes uh, earlier you know the main town which is Lindos is great to visit and it has a great market. I'm always looking for markets and restaurants and it has great stuff, but you have to get out of town and really explore the rest of the islands because Nora's background at the beginning, that is on roads, those ruins. So really cool, just opportunity to visit a road less traveled. I would recommend in roads to hire a private driver or something like that and take a tour and go tour the island because it's beautiful and full of history. Lindos is where and Rhodes is where the Colossus stood in ancient times, welcoming everybody into port and scaring the bad guys away. But unfortunately, the Colossus is not there anymore because it burnt down like a long time ago. We do visit Turkey as well. And we go to Kusadasi because if anybody has wanted a history, another great history lesson, it's to visit Ephesus. So Kusadasi is another stop that we visit. Mykonos, I can't say more about Mykonos. When you visit Mykonos, and that's one of our ships, I love immediately going down to like literally right on the water and finding a taverna right on the water. You can almost put your feet in the water at night. Again, a great sunset. Mykonos is known for those amazing windmills. I'm going to check my time. Look like we're doing pretty good. Here's another trivia question. Please use the chat box. This is a fried cheese that you can find at a lot of restaurants. And they go ahead, they flambe it, and they say, "upa" when they serve it to you. What is the name of this iconic fried cheese dish um, from Greece? And you get a gold star if you know the answer to this. Well, I'm going to tell you, it's Saganaki. So that is Saganaki and Oh, star for Stacy. She knew it was Saganaki. Did she? Okay, perfect. So, uh, uh, Stacy, congrats. Saganaki, nothing better. Um, and just so tasty. So amazing. Now we're going to move on to itineraries just to show you some of our upcom um, upcoming itineraries. And this is just a handful of them to show you what they look like. Now, yes, this one has Venice in it, but this is a 10 night, September 27th of 22. So uh, next year in September, 
And as you can see, we're doing all of these iconic islands that we just talked about. Plus we're doing some other areas that a lot of people might not think about. So that's called a Greece intensive voyage. Here's another one, and it's a little bit different. So this is on the Azamara Quest, the 15th of October, 2022, Athens to Athens, seven nights. People love this itinerary. So just another great itinerary with, again, the road less traveled. Now, again, we have more of those country intensive voyages. We have a lot more, but I just wanted to give you an idea of what they look like. Now, these itineraries are gonna feature Athens, but are gonna to go to other areas in the Eastern Mediterranean. I love this one, ancient trade routes, to learn all about um, these his historically um, amazing areas. So Athens, it includes, it includes Dubai, it includes go to see the pyramids in, uh, in Egypt, etc. So that's a great one. This is another one that I like. It's called the Egypt and Israel Intensive Voyage. So we are going to be able to visit um, Israel and be able to spend a lot of time in Israel. And we're also going to see the pyramids, of course, in Egypt, and this does Athens as well. And I love the addition of uh, Istanbul. I think it's it's a magical, magical itinerary. Now you're, you're hearing something from me because I all of these itineraries are amazing. Like I look at these and I say, this is so great because I wanna go on all of these. So this is the Pharaoh Kings and Emperors Voyage. Look at all these areas that you're visiting. You're visiting Haifa in Israel. You're visiting a uh, Athens, Capri, Rome, Cairo, all of these wonderful areas and, and Jerusalem as well. And again, that's 15 nights. That's November of next year. So the last question of the day that I have for you, if you'd like to use the chat function is, you can purchase these necklaces and items all over Greece. What is its name? So these are meant to kind of scare away evil spirits. Does anybody know what these iconic blue- Daisy is calling it the evil eye. That, boy, that, another gold star, okay? It is an evil eye, that's correct. So they call it the evil eye and it's meant to kind of scare away bad spirits. Um, so you can find these things all around Greece and be able to purchase them and bring them home for yourself and for your loved ones. So the three things that I really want to leave you with today is the three things that people most come back with when they sail with Azamara. And they come back talking about longer time and destination and just how much that meant to them. Because if you're traveling halfway around the world, you want to see that destination. You want to visit those cultures and experience everything that they have to offer. So they come back raving about the time in port. Also, they come back talking about the ships. Our guests come back and they're like, it's home. It's 690 passengers. Even at full capacity, there's never a line. You don't have people on top of people. It's slow cruising. It's, it's remarkable. If you love river cruising, you're going to love this as well because it's that same mentality. We kind of draw some parallels with them. And they come back and they talk about the crew. They have friendships with the crew. Our guests, I'm on Facebook all the time and with all of our crew and people just are engaged with our captains, hotel directors, cruise directors. People love um, our crew. It's just amazing. So moving along, I did want to let you know that we do have an exclusive offer right now in the marketplace. And this is good until March 31st of this year. So we have a month for this, just about a month. And it's save up to 40% on, on select voyages, and there's a lot. And it's also free Wi-Fi which is important. So you're getting all that value with the gratuities and the select beverages, cultural events, you know, shuttle service, et cetera, but you're saving 40% and you're getting that free Wi-Fi, and we have it all extended on voyages through November of 2022. So jump in and, and save um, 
save because it's a tremendous saving. The other thing that we have going today for you, and this is an exclusive offer, is if you book any Azamara voyage with your travel advisor by March 18th of this year, so two, two weeks from today, you'll receive up to $250 in onboard credit. It depends on what kind of stateroom you stay in. It depends on the amount. That's an exclusive offer and it's good for two weeks. So think about that. And boy, we're actually like a couple minutes early, which is fantastic. So I'd like to just say thank you very much. And I'm actually going to stop sharing my screen. Oops, there we are. Yes, hello. Alan knows a lot about Greece. Okay. And, and he wants to let us know that the Colossus of Rhodes, the big statue, it didn't it didn't burn down. It it oh it collapsed, collapsed during the earthquake. During the earthquake. Okay. Yes, exactly. And yeah, and I had I had I don't know why I thought it burnt down. And statues are kind of hard to burn down, I think. <laughs> so um yeah, Alan, you are correct. So it did crumble from the uh from the um earthquake in yeah, two hundred BC or whatever. It's 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 interesting. But exactly. um great history, great great food, great people, just serenity, right? So very much relaxing. And again, I I just really enjoy being able to talk to you about Azamara and introducing you to Azamara. And if you'd like to use the chat function, I'd like to know just so I get kind of a mental uh, image. Who knows of Azamara? And do we have any past uh, guests? And you can use the chat function like that. You know, are you familiar with Azamara? And uh, did you learn anything today if you weren't? And have you sailed with us before? We'd love to hear from you. And if you have any questions, I'm here to help as well. And then, um, uh, Alan, I did open up your microphone if you would yeah. like to ask a question. Hey, Alan. Yeah. Hi, um, can you hear me? I can, most definitely, thank you. Okay, um, thank you for your presentation. It so happens that uh, I'm calling you from Glasgow, uh, where your <laughs> ships are. Excellent. Are better, uh, Have you right seen now. them? No, I have not. Um, although my office isn't far away from the Clyde. Uh, by the way, we call it Glasgow, not Glasgow, but uh, I'll let you away with that. Okay, uh, <laughs> thank you. I don't know if I maybe missed, I did miss the first few minutes of your presentation, so maybe I missed. Uh, this kind of thing, but I have some questions about uh, coronavirus and yeah. all that kind of stuff. So I apologize if um, if I'm going over stuff that you maybe covered at the beginning. But um, kind of two different batches of questions: one about on board, and then one about what happens if. So my questions about on board are things like. Um, first of all, vaccination policy. Will you have or do you have a policy that passengers have to be vaccinated? Okay. What about um, capacities on board? Are you going to sail at full capacity or, or reduced capacity? The tables, for example, they may have been older pictures, but they didn't look very socially distanced to me. Uh, what about rules on board for masks and so on? And in particular, Trying to convince my wife to go on a cruise in the near future is extremely difficult. Mm -hmm. I'm an experienced cruiser. Yes, I've been in the Greek islands. I haven't been with you. But the difficulty we see is you can have all the rules in the world and take all the precautions that you like, and hopefully you'll come back to me about some of the points I raised. Mm -hmm. But my experience and our experience is the crews on ships are very, very reluctant to enforce rules because they don't want to upset the passengers. And so my question is, if you have rules about masks and so on, how are you going to enforce them? So that's one batch of kind of questions. My second thing, I'll give you a chance to think of your answers to that, is what about if there is an outbreak on board? Now, we saw last year ships were all over the place, stuck out in the ocean, so on and so forth for a long period of time, all sorts of calamities happened. Do you in particular as a cruise line have uh, some kind of um, plan in place that if the worst happened and there was an outbreak on board, 
that you would be able to get back to, let's say it was Athens you embarked from, mm -hmm. we would be able to get back there, disembark people and help us to get home because it's not going to be an at all bonded deal where you have to get us home. So how would you take care of that? So sorry for all those questions, but these are very real concerns. No, these are, and these are very good questions as well. So I, I appreciate it. And it's something that's on all of our minds, Alan. So here's the long and short of it. Um, the long and short, it might not be the answer that we're all looking for, but protocols, we're, we're part of the Royal Caribbean group right now. So Royal Caribbean. With Royal Caribbean, Caribbean, I'm familiar with, very familiar yes. with. So they, they, they take this very seriously. We take this very seriously. So I can't speak to a director level or an executive level, but we don't have our specific, just like a lot of cruise lines don't because we're dependent upon the CDC. We don't have those protocols in place. We're working on them. It's called healthy return to sale, where we brought in medical experts from all around the country to work on this, to work on protocols. Like what is it going to look like? We don't know. We can speculate partitions on ships, the mask mandates, um, even things like going into port, when you get to a country, are, are they gonna allow um, certain amounts of people off the ship or everybody off the ship? Are we gonna go at half capacity compared to full capacity um, on the ship? 690 passengers, so half would be, you know, three, 340 ish. Um, we don't know. We just that's that's where we're at. We just don't have the answers. Even the vaccination question, um, that is something that's important, but we don't know what that looks like yet. So as we're navigating this, we we're suspended now through I think we're suspended through June of this year, um, meaning we're back in July and you know, it's, it's rough to have to do that, but we're following what all the cruise lines are doing. Um, but the protocols are not in place yet. And because we're in an ever changing world, what, what we might decide on today is going to change tomorrow. So I think we need to wait a little bit when it comes to the protocols and it comes to that. I wish I could convince your wife right now to book and to sail, but I can't unfortunately explain what it's gonna look like on the ship. Um, your other question about like when we're out, if something does, like if there's an outbreak, I can guarantee you Royal and Azamara and everybody is working on that and thinking about what that's gonna look like. Um, but again, we just don't have the protocols of what's going to happen in the event. But I can guarantee you they're thinking about it and they're working on it. It's very important, but we just don't have the answers yet. And we're all kind of in the same boat as cruise lines. We're kind of looking at each other. Now, I can give you two good, like, good news stories with Royal Caribbean. So number one is Royal had that, they did, I think, two voyages out of Singapore. And they just went, it was a couple of days, they stayed at sea and it was only for people from Singapore. It went off, awesome, great. Now they're doing one in Israel where they're gonna leave from Haifa, go out for a couple of days in the Mediterranean and then go back to Israel. So they're kind of, I think, testing the waters. I know that's cliche, but in a pun, but we just were, we're just waiting at this point. I would love to convince you and your wife, let's get back out there, but I don't have specific answers, unfortunately, of what it's going to look like when we get back. But I wish I could help more. And, and I can speak to just the industry in general, because, you know, Bob knows his company and his parent company and everything. Um, the other cruise lines are talking about having a vaccine requirement. Okay. So, it's very possible that others will follow suit. We just haven't seen it yet. The situation is just so fluid and changing and it depends on the destinations that the, the cruise ships are going. Um, so I, I guess to add to Bob's point, we don't know a lot yet. We know that there's a lot of people working on this um, because everybody wants you to return to cruise safely. Um, it's just, honestly going to be a few months before we see what it really looks like but you make a really good point about how things Absolutely. are going to be um, uh, um, Bob if you 
if you don't mind, uh, I, I don't want to hold too much time, uh, but Bob touched on one particular point that is it's absolutely critical to me and certainly us, which is what happens when you, you go to port. Because I'm one of these people that does not want to go on an organised tour. Okay. I don't need an organised tour. When I was on Mykonos, I went on the local bus. We went on a little boat roundabout. We're quite, we really want to do that. We do not want to go in an organized group. Now, if, except, okay, St. Petersburg in Russia, yeah, you have to go on an organized trip. But anywhere else, we don't want to do that. So we really would want a, a guarantee that when we got to the ports, we're going to be able to go and do our own thing. Otherwise, for us, it's not the same experience. You hit the nail on the head, and that's one of our, you know, being that that's our bread and butter is staying longer. Um, that's very important. I'm in the same boat. Another pun. Look at this. I'm in the same boat because I, I like to explore on my own and not necessarily do tours. Like you said, St. Petersburg, it's unavoidable. But um, here's what I've heard. And again, this is not anything that's set in stone because this relates to all cruise lines, not just Vazamara. And it's because it's fluid, it changes a lot. But what I've heard is the talk is what happens when you go to port? Are you going to have to, if you want to visit that area, have to do an organized tour? Or are they going to let you off the ship and just to wander freely? That really comes down to the country's opening and determining like, you know, what are we going to let people do? Are they going to be able to go out on their own? Or do you have to go through a, like a tour operator and do a, do a tour, which I know you don't want to do? Um, if you get off the ship, you have to do that. We don't know yet. And that's just, again, one of these things that's critical and very critical to me as well. But I can assure you that it's being discussed and it will be transparent once that decision is made before the voyage to let everybody know exactly what shore excursions compared to just going off the ship and wandering on your own looks like. But again, it's a critical thing, but we just don't know yet. Nora, have you run into you know, hearing? I'm just gonna mention what I would follow Al, Alan is the digital health passports and, and understanding what those are going to be because right now there, there's a lot of different ones out there we don't know which one is going to stick um but if you follow what what the different governments are um recommending as far as these digital health passports i think that is going to be the next step of um a allowing people to go into port on their own and i think it's going to depend on on that passport that would be my guess um again those are just coming out so we, we, we're not totally sure which, which way it's going to go, but that's what I would look at. Yeah, and I agree with that. It's, it's, it changes, and we, we talk about it every day on our meetings. Every, what, what is discussed at 8 o'clock in the morning could be completely different when you discuss it again at 3 o'clock in the afternoon. Everything is changing just like, I hated using that word, Nora. I hated using the fluid word. Like this is a fluid thing because I was talking about it all the time when the pandemic started. But now it's still that way. It's just still continues to be, what is it gonna look like? But I can tell you that, um, you know, 2022 is booking very well right now. And I know Nora, we talked about that as well. We're seeing that. But we need to know that we need to have that confidence in the protocols and what is it going to look like and how are things going to be different. We're just not there yet, but we will be and we'll be transparent in everything that we do. So we'd love to have you and your wife join us and just, you know, I would take Nora's advice and just, and just you know, talk to your travel advisor and keep us, you know, keep us in the loop. Yeah. All right. If there's any other questions. Thank you, Alan. Alan, there is there, Bob, there's another question uh, from Alan in the chat for you. Um, but while he's going over that, I do want to thank everyone for attending. And Bob, thank you for your presentation. Absolutely. Absolutely. I enjoyed this so much. And Alan, 
Yeah, you know, it's a great question about visiting the ships um, in Glasgow. Um, and I'm going to remember that because this Midwest boy here, um, I need to get my pronunciations down. I still like botch city names in the States. Um, <laughs> but uh, thank you. Thank you for that. And yeah, you know, we need tourism to come back. But I'll look into your question about visiting the ship um, because I don't think that they're allowing it right now. Um, but maybe that's something that they're going to do in the future and to be able to just get a glimpse because you're there. Um, so let me look into that and Nora, I'll let you know so you can pass yeah. that on to Alan. Alan, I've got your email, so I'll, I'll make sure that you get connected it, if that thanks is so much. Thanks, Alan. Have a great right. evening. Well, thanks everybody again. If you have any questions, you can email me and uh, Bob, thank you for all of your time today. Hope you have a great afternoon. Absolutely, bye everybody. Thank you so much, take care, bye-bye. Bye-bye. Be well.